Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk a little bit about arthroscopic repair of the triangular fibrocartilage, and I have no financial disclosures. Dussault in 1771 described this entity, and Palmer and Werner in 1981 described the classification of injuries, and it has been since recognized as an important structure that stabilizes the alnocarpal uh, uh, axis. Diarrhea pain is an extremely common presentation we see in clinical practice which can be disabling for the patient with severe restriction of strength and activities. It is a difficult um, entity to understand with, uh, with a lot of differential diagnosis and can be difficult to treat because if we are not able to differentiate between the various causes for ulnocide wrist pain, TFCC injuries can be missed. It's also called as a black box of the wrist joint because of several differentials that may result in underside wrist pain. And it is also called as the low back ache of the wrist joint. And at times it can be referred to as the drudgery of the undersided wrist and the pain that may be resulting from various pathologies in this particular area. So the triangular fibrocartilage is triangular in shape. It extends uh, from the sigmoid notch of the radius to the stylar uh, process and is inserted onto the fovea and now several anatomical and arthroscopic studies have shown that there are two components the proximal and the distal of which the proximal has got a foveal insertion via sharpies fibers and here is a coronal section of the fetal wrist showing the sharpies fibers uh, that are seen to be inserting onto the fovea and having a very solid insertion onto the bone. And this is thought to be the primary stabilizing function of the TFCC. So the TFCC not only stabilizes the DRUJ, but it also provides for cushioning forces and provides a flexible mechanism and a trampoline kind of a gliding surface for the carpus. It is a load-bearing joint and the load is transferred from the hand to the radius to the humerus where, and also at the same time it allows for pronation and supination wherein the fibers uh, remain intact. So the problem of the TFCC uh, is unnecessary wrist pain and patients uh, may present with a click or a clunk that may be associated with the injury. It's, uh, several studies have shown that uh, falls onto a pronated hyperextended wrist with distraction forces and at times with distal radius fractures you will find TFCC injuries. So this particular slide highlights that with ulnar deviation 80% of the forces are being transmitted on to the ulnar sided wrist and through the DRUJ and hence in a defunct TFCC it's very easy to understand why people will have ulnar sided wrist pain. Several modalities of clinical examination methods have been described but uh, in our practice we rely on a thorough history uh, which includes unnecessary wrist pain uh, which may be accompanied by clicking with a history of a fall or mechanical symptoms that improve with rest and worsen with activity. These patients are often uh, having positive provocative maneuvers such as the ballotment test, the shuck test and the shear test which reproduce the pain. There may be weakness with ulnar deviation, the forearm and a neutral. Uh, there may be a carpal sag, a lunotriquital interval tenderness, a positive lunotriquital ballotment or a shuck test, and an ECU tendon uh, subluxation. Uh, classification is very well known from Palmer and Werner, which uh, basically talks about a type 1 and type 2 tears, type 1 being traumatic and with four subtypes, whereas type 2 are predominantly degenerative tears with uh, five uh, subtypes has has been highlighted in the slide. Uh, we recommend a standard radiographic evaluation uh, with these views uh, added with arthrographs at times with or uh, without uh, an MRI investigation and an MRI would usually reveal uh, the classical signal change on T2 weighted sequences which reveal the TFCC injury. So when and how to treat. When you have a stable DRUJ, you splint or you do an arthroscopic debridement, whereas if you have an unstable, you would want to repair the ligament. What are the options that are available? Uh, and, and these are the ones that have been described in literature. 
for 1A you would do an arthroscopic debridement, 1B arthroscopic repair, 1C an open repair and 1D you could do an arthroscopic or an open repair. However, there are uh, several classifications that are replacing the, uh, the old classification and as you can see in this particular slide, there's a complete belotment which would indicate a foveal avulsion of the TFCC which would mandate an arthroscopic repair or a foveal reinsertion of the torn TFCC using, utilizing a suture anchor. The technique is standard as you can see. The working portals are the 3-4 portals and the uh, portal and the viewing portal is usually the 6R or the 4-5 portal. The bony landmarks are identified and marked. The listus tubercle is first marked afterwards the head of the ulna and the stider process of the ulna. The outline of the distal radius is drawn. The EPL lies just ulnar to the listus tubercle. The basis of the second and the third metacarpals help you identify the fourth extensor compartment. The ECU lies just dorsal to the stylar process like so, which is marked here. So now you have all the bony landmarks that are required for marking your uh, portals. The 3-4 portal is a soft spot which lies just distal to the listed tubercle and is being marked here. Whereas the 6-R portal would lie just radial to the ECU and the 6-U portal just under to the ECU. These are portals that are usually made under direct vision. A hypodermic needle is used to enter the joint and the joint is then sufflated with 3 to 5 cc's of normal saline and a back flow or a back pressure on uh, removal of the hypodermic needle would ascertain that your joint is adequately sufflated and that you are within the joint. Once the position of the 3-4 portal is ascertained, a 15-gauge needle is used to make the incision into the skin and the dermis, taking care not to go any deeper in order to avoid injury to the tendons and the nerves. A hemostat, which is an arthroscopist's best friend, is used to gently spread the tissue and enter the joint by a soft pop that may be felt as a give wave of the dorsal wrist capsule. The arthroscope is inserted through the cannula and is locked and that would begin the diagnostic round of the wrist joint. It is usually my practice to follow a set sequence of observation or diagnosis wherein we go from bone to ligaments, from proximal to distal, from radial to ulnar. And it's very seldom that you will miss a pathology if you follow a set sequence in performing your arthroscopy. An outflow cannula is inserted into the 6U portal for an outflow of the egress of the saline. And that also marks uh, your 6U portal if you would like to use it for any instrumentation or passing your suture anchor. Um, here we are demonstrating with the needle itself that there is a small cyst formation along with the TFCC tear with some synovial proliferation or synovitis. I am now using another hypodermic needle to place my 6R portal under direct vision. The dorsal veins are protected and injury is avoided to prevent any unnecessary and unwanted bleeding gentle dissection and spreading of the tissues will prevent injury to the nerves and the tendons as can be seen here and a gentle pop into the capsule would allow entry into the joint. An extension of the arthroscopist finger that is a hook probe is now used to palpate different structures and here you could see a peripheral tear, complete tear of the TFCC that is being put into evidence. The size of the tear can also be measured using the hook probe. A shaver is then brought in, which is used to shave the scar tissue and the synovial proliferation and to freshen up the torn edges. A very neat test is a suction test as can be seen here. As you apply suction, the torn TFCC is sucked into the 
negative pressure that is exerted by the suction cannula or the suction tip of the shaver. So besides the trampoline test, the hook test, the ghost test, these are different tests that have been uh, documented or described by various authors to reveal or to describe uh, TFCC injuries or to, to put into evidence TFCC injuries. And one of them is the suction test that was described by the Mayo Clinic group. And it's a very neat and a very nice test that would show you um, a complete avulsion of the TFCC. Subsequent shaving is done and then uh, and uh, outside in type of repair is performed using strong non-absorbable suture materials such as a number two ethibone as can be seen here. That's one limb of the suture that has been passed and then you use a 2 PDS suture as a loop through which the first limb of the TFCC repair uh, non-absorbable suture can be passed to form a nice horizontal mattress suture. In this particular case, the structure of the TFCC looks pretty good and hence a simple um, suture, uh, mattress suture would be sufficient to perform a repair, but at times a Mason Allen kind of a stitch can also be used in case the TFCC seems to be a little degenerated or a little flimsy. As you can see here, the ethibone suture is now being retrieved and again we are performing the suction test and you can see the TFCC does not get sucked as much. So this kind of reveals that this is prior to tying the suture knot. We are just holding on to the TFCC and you could see a nice solid repair that can be achieved in this particular case. Once you have a certain sufficient strength and adequate passage of the suture, you can then go on to tie a nice surgeon's knot or a Nicky's knot that lies subdermally or subcutaneously in the portal. So that completes a uh, capsulo ligamentous repair. And this is a video that would show you a foveal reinsertion of a detached TFCC. So this is pretty much like what we have learned from our shoulder colleagues, uh, wherein you uh, not only scope from the radiocarpal joint, but also in the uh, DRUJ portal to look underneath the TFCC and to prepare the footprint of the head of the ulna at the fovea, not the head, the foveal footprint where the TFCC would sit back. You can see preparation of the footprint at the base of the styler process in the fovea. This is a view through the DRUJ portal. And once that is accomplished, we go on to passing a suture anchor by making a pilot hole. These are instrumentations that vary with different companies that provide the suture anchors. We usually prefer a 2.4 mm uh, suture anchor with non-absorbable suture, braided suture for our foveal reinsertion. So arthroscopic assisted foveal reinsertion is usually indicated or is indicated when there is a complete avulsion of the TFCC from the fovea. This is where the suture sits in, the suture limbs, the suture anchor sits in and the suture limbs are then retrieved through the 6U portal. We are viewing through the 3-4 portal. The suture limbs are then retrieved outside and they are then passed through the TFCC similar to what we saw previously using hypodermic needles just like so. So here is one limb that is coming in through the dorsal aspect of the TFCC. We try to catch the dorsal radio and the ligament and the volar radio and the ligament on each side so as to have a nice wide grasp of the TFCC and your final repair would look something like this. 
with the suture anchor sitting in the fovea and the TFCC repaired back on to the uh, fovea. At times, small peripheral tears may also be repaired using uh, non-absorbable sutures or PDS um, to perform a capsular ligament. And this is the, pa the same patient as you can see. A very solid repair has been accomplished and stability has been restored immediately post-operative um, with a foveal assisted reinsertion, arthroscopic assisted foveal reinsertion of the TFCC. Post-operative results can be very uh, encouraging in patients returning to sports in about 90% of the cases with comparable restoration of grip strength and range of movement. So in conclusion, arthroscopic repair is indicated when there are distal lesions of the TFCC with minor instability, whereas uh, foveal reinsertion is for complete tear with major instability. I would like to pay my tribute uh, to Professor Christoph Mathula, my mentor, and invite you for our cadaver workshop with hands-on training on the 23rd and the 24th of February. It's a unique course, and I exhort you all to attend this to learn arthroscopy skills for the uh, wrist joint. Thank you very much.